Uh, I think Trudeau is is the worst that you can find in politics. Uh, started, you know, punishing citizens for expressing what they want to say. We, this is our country. We want our country back. When it rains, it pours in Canada here. We've got a lot of news going on. Welcome back to Moose on Lose. My name's David. Today, we've got Pierre Polyev absolutely dominating the polls in Atlantic Canada. And we've got a red carpet event where an author absolutely obliterates Justin Trudeau. <laughs> so first up, we got uh, polling numbers here. This is in Atlantic Canada. Pierre Polyev just destroying. Now, what's interesting about this is not just the 55% to 19% liberal, but look who's in third place. <laughs> it's the Green Party at 10. Oh, who's in fourth place? It's the Purple People Leader Party. 9% <laughs> low little Jagmeet here at 8% fifth place. Oh, Jagmeet, this must be, uh, yeah, that must hurt, buddy. So this comment here, it says, I love how the uh, PPC has climbed past the NDP and is more than other now. There's more PPC comments here. Why is it PPC included? Are there really that many radicals here in Nova Scotia that would vote PPC? Uh, people like the purple people eaters. <laughs> One-eyed, one-horned. <laughs> Flying purple people eater. Just another communist party like the liberals. So we've got this clip here. It's like some sort of red carpet event uh, Rebel News is at in Mexico City. We've got an author here and I'll just set up first. His name is uh, Miklos Lukacs. I personally haven't heard of this guy, but he was ripping Trudeau. So I was like, well, who's this guy? Let's just check it out. As it says here, he's a Peruvian author and researcher known for his work in transhumanism and on the impact on technology on society. He was born in Lima, Peru to Hungarian parents, etc., etc. So you can see here, here's the name of his book, which is in, uh, not in English, in, in Spanish. Rebel News asked him a bunch of questions about Canada and Trudeau. And we're just going to jump in a little bit of the ways here because he talks about the Freedom Convoy and how that's what he thinks Canadians should be doing right now. How we were able to change the minding of a whole country that now there is nothing as a boy or a girl. It's a very tricky question in political terms because what you are asking me is to suggest how to combat this. Canada is, now Canada is openly a dystopian society. If Canadians don't understand where they are living right now, it's, it would be very sad. But um, Canada is one of the least uh, you know, countries where you have freedom right now. You're very unfree in Canada. Canada is one of the most, if not the most, dystopian society in the world. And I think of the truck drivers. I will just say that so I avoid problems, but you know, get your trucks, visit the cities, take your country back for yourselves. That's what I think should be done. How do you see the man like Justin Trudeau? How do you per perceive him? You're putting me into a lot of trouble. Well, this is a free media. Well, uh, I think Trudeau is is the worst that you can find in politics. It's it's a mean, evil, idiotic, uh, sub-intelligent human being. <laughs> And I think he has no limits for power. He can do whatever it takes for power, even destroy his own country, his own people. I think he's the worst, one of the worst human beings on planet Earth. And I hope he ends as he deserves. <laughs> this guy is an absolute savage. You just call him the worst human being on Earth. <laughs> and so how the, the people can actually like be able to spread about the concern of where we are going towards to mm -hmm. as a society, as a, uh, the whole world, if one side of the story, the conservative side, the right wing, mm -hmm. uh, the people who are trying to ring the bell mm -hmm. are being censored heavily. Uh, the problem is that when you start closing all institutional avenues for you know expressing your freedoms and trying to dispute politically some some agendas, when those roads are closed, it's like a boiling, you know, pan or how do you call it, an olla, you know, mm -hmm. there will be a point where it, it will blow. And that's what I'm, I'm concerned about, not only in Canada, but in the UK. In Britain, you had this burst of, of anger and, uh, and Keir Stammer, who is another guy in the line of, of Justin Trudeau, uh, started, you know, punishing citizens for expressing what they want to say. We, this is our country. We want our country back. Mm -hmm. We are not against immigration. We want control immigration. We, have, we want positive immigration, not, not the kind of immigration that, you know, uh, mature men ready for fighting. And this is the kind of refugee you have. I think that, yeah, you you have to recover that sense of, 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 of nation, of, of pride. I think it, that's what has happened in the UK, in Canada. People have lost that, that sense of pride, that sense of 
I would say the response that they have, they have to fight for their country. Unfortunately, what will happen is what I say is that there will be a point where it will, it will blow, it will explode, and it could get nasty. And we should try to avoid that. But there's a point where you just cannot avoid these things. You have to fight for your freedom. So he goes on to talk about the UK and a lot of the stuff going on. I can't show you guys any of this footage. Just way too much rioting and protesting and all that kind of stuff. But I'll link this up if you want to watch it later. So we got a bit of an update here. This is that guy uh, who owns a chocolate uh, company. And I showed you that cheesy promo video of Trudeau tasting the chocolate. He's like, oh, 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 so good. Oh, oh. Like, and then someone left in the comments, a uh, taxpayer kind of funded, it looked like uh, funding that this guy got. Well, it turns out a lot of these people have been saying the same thing here. Hold up, he was given 400K of taxpayer money to open a chocolate business. So I have another one here that says the same thing. Justin Trudeau gave this guy's company five handouts totaling approximately $379,375 of taxpayer money to build this company. What struggling Canadian got this? You know what? I would love to get $400,000 here and hire some people and, and build this out to be uh, bigger than it's just, just me. Can I get 400 grand? <laughs> If all entrepreneurs got this, think of the debt load Canadians would have to bear. So something is funny here, this guy's relationship with Trudeau. So next up, we've got this loser here, Mark Miller. This is Justin Trudeau's immigration minister. I've had him on the show here a couple of times in the last week uh, because they're they're backpedaling now on their policies. Looks like they're going to be pushing out some of the really low income uh, foreign workers or students who can't get jobs or whatever. And here he is getting grilled by the CBC of all places. <laughs> You, you talk about um, having to adjust on the fly, but I mean, you're scaling back the number of temporary foreign workers because the levels got too high. You scaled back the number of international students because the levels got too high. Did your government, to some extent, lose control of the number of people entering this country temporarily? Well, look, I'd say the adjustments that were made, particularly after COVID, when we had incredible needs for people uh, and, and just the need to, to, to fill spaces in the job market uh, prevented a recession in this country. Probably two recessions, Catherine. So, uh, two recessions, maybe even seven recessions. Well, what is this incredible need? He said this multiple times now. What incredible need during COVID? Everything shut down during COVID. There was literally no one was working. No one was doing anything. Uh, when we when we, when we employ hindsight, we have to make sure we look at the factors we were dealing with at the time. Those factors no longer exist. Uh, and in the international student space that I'm keenly aware of and have made some substantial and substantive changes, uh, there's more work to be done. But what we saw is an area that serious, got seriously overheated. A number of post-secondary institutions taking uh, short-term gain without looking at the long-term pain for the country. And if there's any, uh, if there's any, there's criticism to go around at all levels of government. We're probably only a level of government, not making a cent off in international students. Uh, but again, this is a program that aims excellence and it, one that I have the responsibility, along with my colleagues in other provinces, to reform. Uh, we have to take a look at who's coming into the country, at what volume, and for what purpose, and what are the long-term effects. So that's work that is largely. Uh, complete but we still have some adjustments to make in that space because when we talk about the temp sort of the pie chart that comprises the people that are temporary temporarily here uh, a good chunk of that is uh, is students international students and the postgraduate work permits that come with them i appreciate um, that you're making the argument uh, prevented a recession or two but did you overcorrect i mean when you look at the circumstances now and you're having to pull back in all these different areas were there not missteps uh, you know, look, I'm not, it's not the argument. The International Monetary Fund, the Bank of Canada, has said as much, and it is one of these measures have been uh, almost solely responsible for making the labor force younger, which is incredibly important. Immigration writ large, writ large has been incredibly important to do something that a lot of G7 countries have a real challenge doing and some are failing at, and we've been pretty successful at. That's come with a conundrum in around affordability, particularly around housing, and when we see those things congeal, when we see them, an economy that is contracting in areas where we no longer need that help, well, then we have to take another look at it. This guy can't take responsibility. He can't just say, I, I was a bonehead, I messed up. I, I, was I was handed a big pile of steaming bag of dog crap from Sean Frazier. He handed me the bag, I lit it on fire. We're both boneheads. He can't even just say, yeah, I messed up, I didn't do a good job. Uh, take a step back and look at a bunch of options. Uh, to contract or at least change the policies that have enabled people to come in in those numbers and that's what we're currently uh, looking at as a cabinet. He's admitting basically that the current Liberal government failed to walk and chew gum at the same time. One-dimensional analysis failing to consider effects on other important factors. 
All I hear are excuses they lost control and now he's backpedaling. He starts with the premise that we needed to increase immigration during the pandemic. Why would we need to do that? That's exactly what I said. At the time we should be closing borders, the liberals are bringing in people. It, it doesn't make sense, anything there. Either they're lying or they were doing something that didn't help our country at all. Why would you bring in people when there's this big world event where we should be shutting the doors? Mismanaged Canada's immigration levels is a fancy way of saying imported and distributed terror cells coast to coast <laughs> yeah pretty much we've got another clip here from the halifax retreat this time it's from uh, randy balsano we got to get him speaking because he hasn't had his poopy pants moment yet donda and ashley um i've been reflecting on the summer on uh, the personal on personal tax in politics i don't know if you know that there was a a very nasty car parked outside of my house for over six weeks that was affiliated with uh, it was definitely conservatives uh, they would switch their cars every three four days to comply with bylaws hateful slogans on the car the police did their job that car is no longer there but we've got rising rhetoric in this country that is uh, putting at risk good people being in politics and we're in full recruitment mode I want to see excellent people of, uh, of all genders of all races and backgrounds in politics and you know why there's people doing that well that's not right they're doing it because you're a criminal. You were caught self-serving your own company contracts to make a ton of money. You're a PPE company, buddy. You're a loser and a criminal. That's why people are doing that stuff. If you were just an honest, good, hardworking Canadian working for Canadians, you might have slogans saying the opposite. We love you, Randy. Instead of where's the other Randy? Who's the other Randy? I don't know what the slogans say. I haven't seen any photos of what those cars said or what they look like. But either way, this guy's a crook. He's got to sleep in the bed that he made. And I think we all have a responsibility to make sure that we're letting people know that this is a noble profession, that we're here in the service of Canadians. And I want to make sure that that, that hopeful, optimistic sentiment of Canadians continues because Canadians are hopeful people. And look, I, I got to say it because I've been watching this summer and Sean's a good looking guy, but I got to tell you, the obsession <laughs> that Pierre Polyev has with this guy is just weird. Is he hitting on him? What is going on here? And to say this is a noble profession? You guys are doing this because it gives you money and power. You're like one of the highest paid, the p p highest paid public servant job in the country. Not to mention you're self-serving your self-contracts to make even more money. And like, I don't know what's on with that, but like enough already. And quite frankly, like let people do their jobs. He's the best housing minister we've had in a generation. And quite <laughs> frankly, I think you're going to see us build more housing than ever before because that's the plan that we've laid out. And Sean's at that helm. And I think we got to talk with people. Um, on Look at this little boy. <laughs> He's like holding his hands like, mommy, change my diaper, mommy. Sean Frazier is an absolute loser and has destroyed our country. Sure, I'd agree. He's the best at destroying the housing market in Canada in a decade. On the doors, like I've been doing all summer, what do they want? They want more childcare. What do they want? They want Jasper rebuilt and they want it rebuilt properly for the future. That's what I'm hearing in Alberta and Western Canada. And I'm very hopeful and optimistic about this next election with the leader we have, with the team we have to make a case to Canadians that there is more work left to be done on their behalf. Yeah, rebuild Jasper, sure. But how about some talk about getting rid of the pine beetle trees, cutting down those trees in the, in the national park? That's the problem there. This is a federally controlled thing. They wouldn't let them cut down trees because it's a national park. But that was the problem is there's dead pine beetle trees all around Jasper. Maybe clean up that first, then rebuild Jasper. Of course, the Trudeau liberals never do anything right. Is that Randy, Brandy, Sandy, Candy, or one of his other multiple personalities speaking? I think that's what that meant to say. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Which which uh, which Randy? Is, is this Randy or is this, is this the other Randy or Sandy? This clown is incapable of telling the truth. Praising Frazier, the very person who flooded our country with immigrants, thus causing the housing crisis. But according to Randy, Frazier is doing a bang up job. The Liberal Party of Parasites will go down in history as being the most inept government ever. This is well said, Sherry. You've got the wrong Randy. <laughs> All right, checking out my group here. This is an interesting one. It says in Canada, $500 each, a bed for rent. Looks like it's in a garage or in a basement. 500 bucks. You know somebody's going to pay for it too. This headline here by CTV, it says NDP, leaving deal always on the table. Yeah, Jagmeet said that so many times. He likes to make it seem like he's in control, but he's not. He Trudeau's got him by the nads, and he's got Trudeau by the nads, and really nobody's going to let go. The first wave was toxic. The second wave is worse. <laughs> Bring back $10 Chinese food, $600 apartments, and $20 full tanks. No kidding. It's not even that long ago when you could get this stuff. 
Polyev Trudeau Chinese EV tariffs. This is funny. So there's talks. I don't know if it's official yet. The liberals were, are looking to put a 100% tariff on EVs from China coming into Canada. And it's, what's funny about that is Polyev said that's what he, he would do, uh, what he's calling for them to do. But for Trudeau to do that, well, that goes against his whole climate change agenda. Why would you increase the price of EVs coming into Canada from China that'll be cheaper than basically any other EVs? That would incentivize more people to get an electric vehicle. So it makes no sense. Because when you put a tariff on something, the consumer has to pay that, not the supplier. So the cars will come in at, say, I think the cheapest they said was 12000 US. So say it's like $18,000 Canadian. But they put a, like a 100% tariff, that is now a $36,000 car. So it just costs us an extra 18000 which makes no sense if your whole goal is to get everybody on electric vehicles. So <laughs> Trudeau is kind of screwed with that one. So I don't know what they're going to do, what they're actually going to decide. But well, there you have it. So we've got Pierre Polyev absolutely dominating Atlantic Canada and Jagmeet getting wiped out. Didn't really see that coming, but uh, there it is. The question is now, how much can Justin Trudeau really take before the man breaks?